So in this video, we're going to look at the existence and uniqueness theorem for second order linear differential equations. So our theorem that's going to guarantee the existence of a unique uh, solution runs this way. Hey, suppose you have a second order linear differential equation. So we saw in the previous video what form we expect that equation to have. And if we have an, and suppose that we have initial conditions for that um, first, uh, sec, sorry, second order linear differential equation. So we have an initial value problem for a second order linear differential equation. And then it runs like this. Hey, if the coefficients a sub 2, a sub 1, and a dot, and the function g are continuous over some interval, any interval that you can find, it doesn't matter the interval. So as long as your coefficients in g of x are continuous, there's no discontinuities in those functions, and as long as a sub 2, that leading coefficient, isn't equal to zero on the interval i, then you're guaranteed that the initial value problem has a solution and that that solution is unique. In other words, it's the only solution. So you're guaranteed you're guaranteed by this theorem that there will be a unique solution over any interval i for which the coefficients in g of x satisfy the conditions listed here, that they're continuous and that the leading coefficient isn't, isn't zero. And, and not wanting the leading coefficient to be zero makes sense for a few reasons. One, if it's zero, we actually degenerate to a first order linear differential equation. And two, we're gonna see when, in subsequent videos that a lot of times the solution process is going to require that we divide by the leading coefficient. And that would indicate to us that the leading coefficient can't be zero because we can't do a division by zero. So for example, here's a second order linear differential equation. When we look at it, the a sub 2, the leading coefficient is 1. So our function of x there is just 1. There is no y prime term, so a sub 1 equals 0. We have a minus 4 on the y term, so a naught is a negative 4. And our g of x is just 12x. And when we look at these, 1, 0, negative 4, and 12x, what we, what we notice is that all four of those functions are continuous, which you have to spell right, continuous, on the interval from negative infinity to infinity. There's no infinity. There's no place where 1, 0, negative 4, or 12x are ever discontinuous. So that's one, so our, our coefficients in g of x are all continuous on the interval from negative infinity to infinity. And our leading coefficient is one, so a sub two equals one, which isn't zero ever. It isn't zero for any x on the interval from negative infinity to infinity. It's a constant that's not equal to zero. So this theorem guarantees that there must be a solution to the differ, uh, differential equation with these initial conditions. So I have an initial value problem, y of zero equals four, y prime of zero equals one. So I'm guaranteed that this differential equation with these initial conditions must have a solution and the solution must be unique. So once you find it, you know that you found the only solution that exists. <clears throat> and what we can do is verify that this, uh, this uh, right here is a solution for the differential equation. So to, to verify that this is a solution for this differential equation, we're gonna to need to take the first and second derivatives of y, and then we're gonna to need to plug them in for y double prime and y, and uh, make sure that when we do that, it evaluates to 12x. So if we take y prime, we're going to get 6e to the 2x minus 2e to the negative 2x minus three, and then y double prime is going to equal 12e to the 2x plus 4e to the negative 2x, and the derivative of 3 is 0. So if we grab our differential equation, y double prime minus 4y, when we plug y double prime in here, so plug in y double prime for our candidate solution, when we, we're going to get 12e to the 2x plus 4e to the negative 2x, and then it's minus 
4 times y, but y is up here, so plug the candidate solution in, 3 e to the 2x plus e to the negative 2x minus 3x, and then simplify, we're going to get 12 e to the 2x minus 12 e to the 2x is 0. We're going to get 4 e to the negative 2x minus 4 e to the negative 2x is 0 minus a negative right there we get minus 4 times minus 3x is positive 12x. So when we plug in the candidate solution and its second derivative into this differential equation it evaluates to 12x demonstrating to us that it's a solution and then we can verify that it satisfies the initial conditions given so if I plug a 0 into y we plug a 0 in here we get 3 e to the 0 is 3 times 1 is just 3 plus e to the negative 2 times 0 is e to the 0 which is 1 minus 3 times 0 is just minus 0 3 plus 1 is 4 so the candidate solution satisfies the initial condition that y of 0 must equal 4 and then the second initial condition says that the derivative evaluated at 0 must be a 1 so if we plug in a 0 here we get e to the 0 is 1 times 6 is 6 minus 2 times e to the 0 is 1 so 2 times 1 is 2 minus 3 6 minus 2 minus 3 is just 1 because it's 6 minus 5 so what we see is that the theorem guarantees that there is a unique solution and then once we uh, verify that this is a solution and that it satisfies the initial conditions we know that this must be by theorem the unique solution to the differential equations given the uh, initial conditions that we have.